they, they knew Dendi would drop before they picked Lesh. Prepare for battle. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means Lesh, either. Lesh, Lesh has got a... Maybe Nahaz can enlighten bug. us in the stats. Because Nahaz yeah. is joining us now, thanks to the remake. Yeah. Stats man, Dodo. Means we're gonna now have I get a... to have some uh, more, more, more friends, because Cap is definitely not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not your friend, Ryu? I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. you're my best friend. Yeah. Exactly. You're not my friend. You're my best friend. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and talk about the lanes real quick because Power Rangers looks like they are going to be running a regular battle. old normal stuff. They're going to be running Axe as our uh, off lane solo. We got uh, Ancient Apparition who should be going down to the bottom lane to join their tri lane. Uh, Scandal's going to be playing the Templar Assassin that leaves J4 on the Rubik. And last but not least, of course, is their carry player Moon going to be on the Weaver. Now, Ancient Apparition is doing something a little bit curious right now. I guess he wants to put some sort of ward on their side, uh, maybe just to be able to catch out the rotations the to try begins. and shut down the um, the Templar Assassin, because she is one of those heroes you do want to gank up at least once before that level like seven or eight area. You want to get in there nice and early before the refraction is too high of levels. So um, I could definitely see how good defensive like ward like this that gives you some rune vision, but also being able to give you some sort of heads up of possible support rotations would be a priority for Power Rangers. Well, they have a great pushing lineup and anti-pushing lineup. Power Rangers, they're going to need to be four or five manning Dota if they want to be getting any of these towers because of the tree. That's the only problem from their lineup right now. Well, this could, be, uh, this could be a good start for them. J4 is going to find the Telekinesis. Moon's coming forward. They do have that chilling touch, but the living armor as well. That damage just creaming through Funic real quickly. Tanking up the towers. They're sharing the aggro as much as possible. But Funic, he's dug himself this little hole. And uh, Moon, I think he could have gone for that one, but he decides against it. And doesn't go for the dive. I felt like that was an assured first blood, but Moon, he, uh, he decides not to dive in a little bit further for it. Well, that, that, that should have been first blood, maybe, if they just waited a little bit longer. Uh, maybe they should have waited on the lift. He didn't start with boots first on Funic, which I normally never see. Normally, the uh, Prophet always starts with the the boots first, but middle lane, Dindy got, or no, no, Scandal, Scandal Power Rangers. Herp, herp. He's uh, going to be doing fine against the puck. He's... He's winning right now, and uh, he just got his bottle. So I expect this lane to be a lot harder now for Puck. Since uh, Sing Sing, he missed his block. That's, uh, and when you miss the first block on the first wave, you're going to be having a hard time mm -hmm. against the TA. So. Yeah, because normally you would give an advantage to Templar Assassin. I, I would say most of the time. It, Puck can certainly beat Templar Assassin, but it's I would say it's a little bit difficult. It's about even. If you can harass him a lot mm -hmm. before he gets his bottle, then maybe. Right. But since he has his bottle, he was able to get it so fast with the uh, block. It's it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be too hard to now shut him down effect more effectively. Well, Cheshire Cat, he uh. He has been forced out of the off lane. Of course, so has Funny, because you can see he's just now picked up level two. He's going to have to be jungling. So while uh, both off laners will be forced to go back into their own jungles here, Cheshire Cat, uh, you know, Axe is not the greatest jungler in the world, but at least he can do something here. At least he, he, you know, can find some sort of golden experience instead of just having to constantly put himself at danger up against what is a pretty dangerous uh, uh, tri lane. Honestly, like Razor, one of the more aggressive uh, carries in tri lanes, and then on top of that, you're running a less rack with the leap seed, so he's got double nukes on top of the damage over time coming out the leap seed. That's a lot of damage to deal with, and they're going to go for a push very, very early here. Funic went back to base, healed up his mana, and the first thing he does is come to. Uh, Come to the tri lane to try and take down this tier one tower. Fortify has already been used. They shouldn't have used Fortify oh God. unless it was Radiant's for the edict. Top tower is under attack. Attack. Yeah. He pulled the wave, but it's Dyer's still going to be uh, it's still gonna die. And even though they're pressuring the bottom tower Power Rangers, it's not going to do anything. They're just going to heal it up with living armor. Radiant's so, top tower at the has same fallen. time, you, if you, even if you pressure this bottom lane, you have to make sure you take it. And it's going to take four four of their heroes and Power Rangers to take it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they just, Axe cannot possibly put in that kind of uh, pushing power the way a Furion can. Funny comes in the lane, but immediately Moon wants to force him out. He's not going to be able to get this kill, but he's just going to try and scare him away, even if it's the cost of uh, some of his own life points here. He doesn't even have any regen left, so I'm surprised he played that so aggressively, but... Anything, I guess, to make sure the Furion does not get those levels, because I think they realize how dangerous this pushing squad is going to be. I mean, you mentioned it early on. Oh, Scandal. <laughs> Double damage tree, man. Nothing hurts more than that. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the club, man. You don't, you don't mess with the club. <laughs> it's like a one-hit KO. But he can play aggressive on the bottom lane, because he's about to pick up his ring of health. That's why he was playing so aggressive. So it doesn't matter too much, but... Well, Sing Sing's doing a really good job middle. The CS is about to go in the favor of TA, but he's still doing a great job middle, keeping up with the TA, so... so it's about even in this lane. It's gonna be... it's gonna be on Sing Sing's back. Uh, no, 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 not really. He doesn't need to get the fast blink dagger this game. They just need to map control heavily. Mm -hmm. But once he gets that, though, it's gonna be on him to make a lot of space. <laughs> Yeah, they certainly do have quite the, um, like, snowball-oriented lineup. I would classify Razor as one of those heroes that is very, very aggressive, similar to, uh, I almost want to call him, like, a Viper in the fact that he just, he, like, naturally builds into tank, he does a lot of damage in the early game, but may fall out uh, a little bit going into late game, unless you see, like, the, uh, what you want to see normally, which is the Ags and Refresher build on Razor, but... Uh, normally, his his primary strength is going to be in the mid game. J4 is playing a very dangerous game right now. Like he's sitting in the trees. If a Volt happens to throw on a plasma field, he will reveal that Rubik, and it's going to be a quick, easy kill for him because J4 does not have a teleport. Axe, go ahead and suicides to uh, neutrals, which he normally does, just to uh, go back to lane faster. He already had these tranquil boots. He already bought everything he needed, so that was obviously intended. Well. Now, top lane, J4. <laughs> J4 gives him the faithful, zapping him out a little bit, and uh, will get back to his tier 2 tower just fine. Havos knows he can't really dive it uh, up against the telekinesis. Yeah, and the t tier 2 tower does take a lot of Well, he could have dived it, because he has a puppy for a tree armor. Oh, that's true. The one. He's just yeah. afraid of the teleports. So. I agree. Sometimes it's not worth it to give your carry uh, uh, like all that EXP level, he's level six, giving all that free EXP away, and uh, it's, it's not worth it just for a support kill most of the time. Well, six and a half minutes in, and we have yet to see that uh, that first blood go down, despite the fact that there Dyer's is the scoreboard is lying is to us. Attack. But it seems like uh, Sing Sing and Kuro. Gonna try and get some early map control, like you said, not only taking towers, but also taking away some of the vision coming out from uh, Power Rangers. Now, of course, Moon can still play probably the exact same. Uh, as soon as he get the Blink Dagger is up, though, on, on Sing Sing, he has to be a little bit scared. Top lane, though, J4's gonna get picked off as Funnick has come in from behind. Faithful goes down, but it's not enough to stop this damage. And there's your first blood going the way of Funnick as he rotates around. And there, finally, the Rubik does... Uh, like, he was getting in a lot of extra experience because Axe is jungling, and that's a big advantage to Power Rangers, but he's such an easy hero to just dive and kill real quickly. So, finally, it is punished. Now they're going to be pressuring this Tier 2 tower top. They have... They don't have any D-push. AA still not 6. And Rubik's alive, though. That's the only D-push they have. So they need to rotate either the TA and the Axe, or they're going to... They could lose this. They don't have Fortify. I think they should rotate the TA, but she has a full bottle charges. She should come in from behind. She can get a lot of cleanups. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it's it already feels like it's so late. Radiant's they already did a, a ton of tier 2 tower damage, but Scandal maybe thinking about making his way over. Navi are going to back up at the sign of Scandal going missing, but he's just waiting for a rune to pop up. Turns out it's double damage at the bottom lane. Moon continues his free farm at bottom. Funnick's going to join him for a little bit of experience, but not much else really happening. Just Navi doing a good job taking some of those early towers, uh, really taking advantage of the Leshrac pick here. Sometimes you see a Leshrac go for Lightning Storm, but this is one of those times where you really want to see the Edict as soon as possible. You've got a really great pushing lineup, only made better by the Edict. 
Not to this mention just... burning refraction charge is always nice too. Burning, yeah, that's the one thing they don't have too much, is just they have to have the less wreck constantly on the uh, TA to cancel out the refraction charges. Oh, most easily dies the tower. <laughs> It's like, why is he using this plasma field? Oh, wait, there's a dead uh, A going down. Yep, and now they're tier two towers in trouble. Cheshire Cat makes the rotation over to make sure it stays alive, but that's still a glyph blown. And uh, again, if they don't keep constant heroes at that top lane, it's going to fall in uh, the next Middle couple of minutes here. Under attack. As, yeah, ever since that, uh, what was it? I think it was 8-0 that changed the plasma field, so you got uh, less minimum damage and more maximum damage. So if you're a good Razor player and always able to get the plasma field on just the edge, it's a big buff for you. Uh, you saw how much damage it just did to uh, Cheshire Cat. And there it is, tier two tower gonna fall here. Edict doing a lot of damage. They're gonna try and get some sort of tower kill here. Kuro, he's gonna get caught out, quickly taken out of the fight. Now Moon is gonna go for Puppy next. Ice Blast does land, and Puppy has no escape mechanism from this one. Razor will be able to teleport out in time. But two hero kills in exchange for the tier two tower. I'm sure Nobby aren't gonna be too sad about that one, but the Dyer's courier has been killed. That is gonna be sad. The melt strike coming out from the TA just in time. Well. That's a lot of map control. That's the mech now done for the Razor. Like, that's what I was talking to you about before you didn't Radiant's listen to me. Middle tower and uh, Crickle Boots, are they gonna die? He's gonna oh kill god, Funnick! Oh god, get your cat! This is almost as bad as like watching Mojo play. X. <laughs> oh no, he may go down here. He's gonna get revealed now. Oh, the lightning comes in. Hobos gonna clean him up. Insult added to injury there. It's, uh, Hobos gets that last hit. Now Funnick still kicking out from that battle hunger. May go down, but J4, he's gonna get cleaned up here. Tower might just be enough, but he's got the mech. He's got all of that extra, and honestly, the Power Rangers, they just lost everything here. Now they move, may lose another one. As Kuro, he gets the stun up on FNG. He's gonna get wiped out, and Sing Sing makes the rotation, and they just lost three heroes and Tranquil Boots. Well... They're not going to be stopping any push, and they're not going to be getting any trade-offs as well. That's just a, that's a huge blow. You, you just attack. can't play so silly sometimes with the Tranquil Boots. This is two professional games I've casted Radiant's now where somebody's fallen. lost the Tranquil Boots just because they dropped them. It's, it's just a silly thing. You, mm -hmm. I was just surprised that I haven't seen one get sniped out yet from an Invis rune. Both the times have just been like, oh, well, I'm just going to walk up, take it. I'm just going to walk up and hit it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I agree. People are just doing way too much with uh, the Tranquil Boots. And, like, I see it all the time, like, offlaners laying down their Tranquil Boots to try and get a little bit greedy and go for the last hit. It's like, ah, it's not, it's not worth it, man. If you need health, just just sit there and regen the rest of your health and then go for some last hits. Don't, don't try and get both at the same time. Otherwise, uh, the worst thing that could possibly happen is uh, your Tranquil Boots get stolen and all of a sudden all that CS that you picked up doesn't matter anymore. I just I just didn't like... What's... <laughs> wait, wait, what was that again, Nahas? Uh, he's surprised <laughs> you're not taking the chance to flame MSS. I did! I said <laughs> Mojo. I said... Yeah, Mo I Mojo Storm Stout is, is MSS's. Yeah. No, I, I call him Mojo. He's yeah. yeah he, even though he goes by uh, MSS, he was Mojo Storms out first. So I always call him Mojo. But the thing is, for this game, what's hurting Power Rangers the most is the axe pickup because it's not doing anything for him. E even if he got the Tranquil Boots denied, that's not the problem. The problem is they have nothing to stop the pushes, like what a Clockwork would have done. What a maybe even a Tide Hunter could do in these fights. It's just the axe has. It doesn't help you at all in these team fights, or for deep pushing towers. So, this is, this pick is not working out for Power Rangers. Yeah, we. I mean, yeah. At least a tight hunter can go in. He can walk in and ravage. Here, an axe has to have a blink dagger. Both well, gonna be in a little bit of trouble here. Ice blast is gonna land, and a well coordinated gank should go the way of PR here. Misses the last hit. He actually may walk away from this one. Ice blast may take him down. He's gonna survive. He has the mech immediately afterwards. Dyer's top tower Power Razors, that should have been, that was four heroes going for that attack. Razor, if you include the Ancient Dyer's Apparition with the Ice Blast, and they still fortified. couldn't kill him. I mean, they have a drum Radiance over on the TA, which she didn't use. Fallen. She has phase boots plus a side trap. I don't know if she missed a side trap or what. There's no way that Razor should be walking out of that alive. Mm -hmm. 
And, and let's not forget, Dyer's Rubik also stole the lightning coming out. He's gonna go down, though, anyways. Yeah, he's he got... playing too greedy, trying to deny that tower. But they got the trade off of middle towers, and they're gonna be pressing more. So. I mean, you saw those early towers, they matter, because Sing Sing, he had a, a great blink dagger Dyer's timing bottom tower because of that. And uh, Puppies, level 4 only. They're gonna turn around. Scandal's way too far out here. Sing Sing's just waiting for his opportunity. He's still got a dream call to be able to throw down, but they're not going to go for the kill just yet. I really thought they were going to commit to that one, but they don't really know how many heroes are behind Scandal. And uh, turns out it's the whole entire team, so probably for the best. A BKB is going to be found soon for Moon, um, and that will help dispel some of the fear of uh, Sing Sing and his Blink Dagger. Like, that's one of the better disables to run up against a Weaver early on, is a Blinking Puck with a maxed out silence. Three seconds of silence mixed in with all the nuking power you include as well is uh, pretty rough for, for a Weaver, even if you go the Lincoln's route. So having the BKB is going to be a big boon for, uh, for Moon. Yeah, I agree with you, Nahaz, on the fact that if you don't get a lot of these kills on Axe, then you're not getting all the item progressions which you need. You need a lot. You still need the either the blade mail plus the uh, Axe or whatever you want afterwards. He needs a lot of items just so he's really effective. And if he's not getting kills, I don't think he's going to be getting as much farm as he needs. So, Well, he almost has his blink dagger, though. They'll have that for the next fight. They'll have BKB most likely for the next fight. So all of Navi's heroes are kind of useless against that, except for Tree's Overgrowth. Mm -hmm. A nice BKB pickup. We might be seeing that too on Scandal. Uh, if they can get these BKBs, they can maybe run at run at Navi and take them off, take them off by surprise. But when the Razor has the Ag soon, I that's gonna be doing a lot of damage. You might be just saying bye-bye to the TA's refraction charges, too. Yeah, I mean, between the Edict and then that uh, Eye of the Storm, just uh, getting those uh, little bit of burst shots. And uh, Leap Speed as well, they happen to get that one down. Like, those are all things that can burn down a refraction pretty quickly. The Blink Dagger is up, though, and you can definitely see what Power Rangers are hoping for, which is a good blink-in, three- or four-man call into a three- or four-man Ice Blast. They blow up a couple of heroes real quickly. Uh, what do you think Scandal should be going here? Like, I've seen this actually a couple times now. I believe um, Hani was the one really <laughs> reminded me of his, his Timbersaw, but we're going to be seeing like a movement speed build here coming out for the Templar Assassin where he goes into drums as well as the Yasha. If you go for the drums early, I think it's pointless to go for the uh, Phonic. Has five seconds. So he'll be fine. But going back to the point is I love Yasha as a ca casual item just mm -hmm. for the movement speed. And if you have the drums already, it's uh, effective as well. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> I think I just lost Rio. Rio's down. All right. Oh, guy. Oh, oh, oh he's back. Okay, so you cut off. You cut off at the point. Uh, looks like we might have slight connection issues, but hopefully it'll. Hopefully it will be fine. But you were talking about how if you get the drums early, uh, you like Yasha. But if you get the drums early, and then you cut off. Yeah, if you get the jumps early, then you don't need the blink dagger so much against this mobile lineup. All you need is to just run at them with your heroes. You have the axe already to initiate, and if you get the, you should be going for the BKB instead of the blink dagger. So I like to pick up as long as you have enough movement speed to catch up to the he to the end heroes, then you don't need a blink dagger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was kind of feeling like a blink dagger, just the the initiation of the axe. Like, I want to see that kind of burst damage. I want to see like a more mobile Templar assassin, since you do have Moon, who's probably just going to be like AFK farming the whole entire time. Uh, like, he still needs that big item anyway. So, if you could just get a little bit aggressive with your other four heroes, um, even if it's just like blowing a whole bunch of abilities, like the jump in, the call with the ice blast, with a blink in melt strike, like even if it's just blowing one hero up real quickly, uh, that's still enough an advantage attack. to maybe buy you enough time for Moon to continue his farm. Because at this rate, Navi will be able to finish off the rest of these tier two towers before the Weaver's really up as a carry. Problem with that, going Blink Dagger Dyer's after Phase Boots, you can't go attack. Blink Dagger after Phase Boots because you don't have enough attack speed, in my opinion. Radiant's if you get Treads, then I think you have enough to Dyer's go Blink Dagger, else you need a lot tower. more attack speed and movement speed, just so you can get in and out quicker and get more attacks off. That's just what I think about that. Like, they have the AA Blast coming to the top. 
looking to defend this. Will they? They have fortified. They should be able to fortify. Oh, Cheshire Cat, he finally goes in, jumps, grabs two, and is doing a lot of spin damage here, but they're so damn tanky. Where's the follow up damage? FNG comes in, he already flew behind Splash earlier. Curl will finally go down. Sing Sing's getting a little bit low now. Throws out the chop, not quite enough, but Sing Sing. Still does not have enough health. He threw up the orb, but could not survive throughout that. Two for two exchange, though. I mean, that was decent because they got the uh, the puck and they only lost their two supports. But you could see Radiant's that would have been so much better if attack. only they had the ice blast. It was blown earlier in one of the uh, the earlier pushes. Cheshire Cat couldn't find initiation then. But if they had an ice blast on top of that, that should have been three or four heroes easily. Fast as well, lightning. I agree. They came out a little bit on top. They didn't have to use a fortify there. That's the biggest factor in that team fight that they didn't need to waste it. So they still have two tier twos left, and they have, but they only have one tier one tower on the enemy side. They need to be pressuring. They have the means to do so, and now you're gonna see it. They need to start adding pressure to this map. They're gonna go probably in the enemy jungle, try to ward up, try to get vision on this Furion, what not what they're doing, or they're just gonna go for funic. Have you noticed this build on FNG? He went for face boots. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever seen that before. Oh, we're gonna find uh, Funnick. You were talking about they smoked up, went to the top lane, and they will find him and provide a little donkey action on the side. J4 did steal Trium, so hopefully that'll be able to help him out in some of their pushing issues right now, both D push and, and also threatening some of these uh, side lanes, but. Yeah, what are your thoughts on phase boots? <laughs> I, I always go phase boots on AA, but not as a support. When I go mid, I go phase boots into uh -huh. Eels, into Ethblade. That's what I do when I play AA. When, but I only when you play, play it as a mid. mid. <laughs> <laughs> as a support, though, like, the only support I can really think of that you would uh, get phase boots on a lot is actually Bane, was very popular in going phase boots at a certain time as a support hero because his mobility was just so important. His, also, his right clicks are, are really dangerous. You see a Bane pick up a double damage at level one. Uh, it's not quite as scary as a Trian Protector, but it's, it's almost just because he's a ranged attack. hero. So it's added in that extra element of, of right click damage. Well. See the axe now having his tranquil boots up and running. They know Roach is going on. And, well, they can't do anything about it though, because they don't have. They're, they're not going to be there in time. Beaver could maybe steal it. He, he has a chance with the uh, BKB, but we're going to be seeing him going in Desolator. And if he gets that, they're gonna they're gonna have an, a window of opportunity that maybe they can do something. But this is not the time right now. The they can die. get the remaining tier two towers Dyer's and go high ground with the eggs. Oh, oh no, Scandal. Scandal's been caught. And because he doesn't have a DKD, he has no quick way to get out of this. And he's just gonna get torn apart by all of Na'Vi. Fortunately, though, they should be able to, maybe. Oh no, this is what I was afraid of. Now the teleports come in. They can't even claim this tier two. Uh, fortunately, Dream Code was already blown, so both of the supports should get out. But they were trying to split push earlier and because of the tree trance that were stolen earlier by Rubik. They were actually doing a decent amount of damage, but they couldn't quite finish off the tower. They didn't commit to it. And the uh, tower is now going to be healed up to full with living armor. Same goes with Moon at this bottom lane, threatening the tier one. But again, well, he's going to be diving fun if he gets this kill. Maybe he can. Needs another Shikuchi, though, and realizes it's just too far Dying away. But at least he forwards Funnick attack. back. And hopefully, we'll be able to clear through these living armor stacks and get the tower. There's another creep wave. Dyer's bottom tower is Tree under armor attack. now on four second cooldown. He's gonna What's get it. That game? Yeah, he's got Dyer's it. He attempted to deny by Funic, barely missed. And uh, Manta, Manta being picked up by the Templar Assassin, not a big surprise since you uh, do go the Asha. And this is fairly common, I think, for the movement speed build, but it just seems so, so odd to me. It feels like you're not really doing enough damage. Like, it, it just, normally you look at Templar Assassin, you think of the Desolator Deso, where, right? You jump in, you blow up one hero real quickly with just a meld strike, and it's enough to just kill out supports or really threaten carries. But uh, here you got a little bit more sustain with the temp this Templar Assassin build, especially with the Manta and all the movement speed. Um, I just got to say, I, I just kind of feel like maybe the BKB would have been a little bit better, but either that or the blink, but I already talked about that, so. Dude, yeah, I don't like it too much. They have, yeah. The Pucks is going to initiate, and they're not going to get the run at all. 
Yeah, Moon's gonna pop Radiant's his BKB. Scandal's tower. completely out of damage here. Evokes is gonna be hit like a truck. Finally, Scandal should be going down. One more hit, can't quite get it. Refraction will save him. Moon, he has to get out of here. Looks like they did get a dodge on J4. Evokes, oh, bring brought back by Cheshire Cat. Further into that tier three tower, but not enough to be able to finish him off. Havos is just too damn tanky with uh, all of that that uh, stats he has with the Aghanims on top of that. He's got the mech as well, and then even the living armor being thrown on him. He's just too damn tanky, so it was a good attempt, but they couldn't quite waste the Aegis. All they lost, though, was the Rubik, surprisingly. Like, Scandal just barely got out with his life. He lived with, like, 10 health or something. That was unfortunate. Moon didn't have a TP, so he had to run all the way back from bottom lane. That's that's uh, to take notes, guys. That's why you always have a TP scroll. Just because the Weaver, like, he thought no, nothing would happen, but then TA got initiated on, kind of got caught out there. Luckily, he lo lived, like you said, and only uh, J4 died. But still, another tier 2 tower is going to be going down here, and they can't Radiant's stop it. Bottom tower. Yeah, they, they have to get this tower. one up. Last time they defended this tier 2, Cheshire Cat was already in a position over here, uh, sitting inside the trees, uh, waiting for a good jump. This time around, they, they just do not have the power. Besides the fact, Desolator is now up for the Weaver. So that that is a, a big plus for them. But Ryu, do you really think it's going to be enough? And Na'Vi, like, I, I feel like Power Rangers maybe have a, a bit better late game here with the Weaver and the Templar Assassin going up only against a Razor and a Furion. I would give them an edge going into late game, but Na'Vi, do you feel like they're yeah. under any pressure right now to, to really yeah, try and end the game? Right now. He's, well, go down. he's done for. This is why you don't go Manta, guys. <laughs> like he's just running around. He, he did survive for a very, very long time, surprisingly enough. Like, Refraction should have just been blown up real quickly by the damage over time from Leshrac. But uh, yeah, Sustained Bill did help him live for a while, but <laughs> doesn't it make you survive in the end? So what's, what's the matter? I mean, if you just get a, if you just get a Manta or a BKB there, you'll at least be able to run away or cause Puppy to use his ulti, and then you could probably still get away or get your teammates to come in at the last second, and then they could be always out of position. But I'm, I'm really worried now because Leshrac is transitioning into a carry too. He's almost got his Bloodstone, and once he gets his Bloodstone, that's it's gonna be scary times for Power Rangers. He could just suicide, give all of his teammates back, and. That's a Shiva's done on Razor now. Wait, That's you're... a lot of tank. You, um, you're feeling a Bloodstone here for for the Leshrac? Because I was I, I was kind of hoping Axe. for an Agonims. I was kind of yes. hoping you mentioned carry Leshrac, and I was like, all right, if you're gonna orient towards late game, where you, one of your supports actually turns into a carry, oh, why not go for the full Axe? Axe. Yeah. That's yeah. No, I like the big plays, dude. You Suicide. like the big sacrifice plays. Yeah, I've seen that work a lot of times. That's, a, that's the most annoying thing when you're playing in pubs and then you kill the enemy team's uh, one of their core heroes and then like half of their team just heals up to uh, half HP when they're almost all dead. Uh, that's, that's the worst feeling. You're like, oh, well, we just lost the team fight. You see Cheshire Cat as well as Moon making a rotation to top to maybe see if they can pick off Phonic. They, they need pickoffs right now because Navi are at the height of their strength and there should be nothing stopping them from being able to go uphill. They're about to lose the Aegis, uh, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to force a death in time to be able to use it. So they're going to try and go uphill Radiant's nonetheless, though. And uh, at least use this good 20 seconds of Aegis time to be able to ensure maybe a tier 3 tower here. The Eye Storm is just doing a lot of work to it right now. The has already been blown. Cheshire Cat trying to provide some sort of interference here, but no, no jump is available to him. Like, all of Navi are sitting very, very far back. Now they're going to go in on Scandal, but a good force staff, and now the counter initiation. Cheshire Cat grabbing three, doing a good amount of damage here, but a boast, he's so damn tanky. He's at half health now, being stunned up a little bit more. He falls. Finally, he goes down with the Aegis already having been dropped. Kuro's next on the menu as he goes down as well, and Funny's going to fall. Cheshire Cat coming in at the end, tries to dunk him real quickly, doesn't get the kill, but still, they lose their tier three but get a total team wipe up against Na'Vi. And Power Rangers, I was struggling to see a way for them to be able to actually win this next team fight. But, hey, they made it work. I mean, that was kind of on... I can I can point the blame to people, but I, I'm going to have to relocate it to Sing Sing. He had a sheep stick. He didn't use it that fight, and he, he didn't... Oh, he used it on Scandal early. Oh, he did? Yeah, he did. Yeah, they forced staffed him back. 
that's right. No, well, yeah, he was. He was a piglet, and then he did get four stuff because mm. he was he was linked in. You're right, you're right. But they were all grouped up as four, yeah. and then they got called. So that was a perfect play from more so, I guess, Cheshire Cat. But they didn't have... Did they get puppies? Yeah, they got puppies. Ulti off. They just need four staffs on their team, maybe. Or they just can't group up like that. But that's a swing. Five-man team fight. And you can see from that one team fight now, Scandal can get whatever he wants. He got 3k from that fight. And Cheshire Cat, he got a BK... Uh, I mean, he got his Ags finished. So now he can do a lot of stuff like this. Just roam around. Uh, he's going to die, though. If... Oh, nice curve. Yeah, he landed the stun. Cheshire Cat, he can't do anything but burn out here. As... Uh, his armor isn't going to protect Your him from all that magic damage. From whence it came. Hmm. Well, they all have two cheap sticks, though, on Na'Vi soon. Phonic's going to be getting that. If they can get enough lockdown, maybe they can try and... try and kill these... Uh, try and kill the Weaver. Like I said, this Weaver, he's going to be a big problem if they keep letting him uh, free farm. And I didn't think Scandal would be as big a threat since his item build, but... Since that team fight now, now it's looking kind of devastating. What do you think he goes here though? With with this whole Manta build, what do you build in at this point in time? Like, do you still go for like a a Desolator, even though it is getting a little bit later into the game? Or, I mean, I can't really feel like if you didn't go BKB earlier, well, he's still gonna go for a BKB. I was thinking like, if you don't go BKB early, then, you know, I'm not so sure you're still going to try and go for it later into the game, but Lashrak certainly is becoming a big threat, so... Oh no, he, he needs this. Next, though, they have a lot of magical DPS, a little bit of physical from the Razor and his ulti, but other than that, he should just go for either Crit Stick, because they're not going to be getting a Halberd. Any of these players on Navi aren't going to be getting a Halberd, and the Butterfly is useless, so... The only good item on the TA Double next damage. is either Blink Dagger into Crit or Crit into Blink Dagger or something along those lines just for mobility. <laughs> Blink Dagger is always good on that hero. I love it too, just like you do. So anytime you pick it up, it's a great item. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your rules. There's your rules for uh, you guys playing Tefar Assassin. Always a great item. Moon, he gets off the Shikuchi just in time. He's a fast little piggy. But we're going to have the team fight going out. Ice Blast not quite going to land the mark there. Cheshire Cat's going to go in on 16. They're going to try and pop him real quickly and they get it with the Mount Strike. Now Scandal keeps on going, popping that BKB, trying to put damage down on Kuro, but he pops the Ghost Scepter. He's right in the front line, doing all this magic damage to everybody. Moon will finally fall. Scandal's going to go down as well. Good little force staff going out, but it's not enough to clear him enough room to get away. And uh, the cores go down. At least the supports live for Power Rangers, but uh, I have a feeling that Na'Vi now that they just won a great team fight, they're going to go ahead, take Roshan, and then just five man down middle once again. Wow. They dealt with the Weaver and his BKB. And that was without Sing Sing and his uh, puck, because it went down at the beginning of that fight. So it was amazing. They dealt with the TA BKB and Weaver BKB just by, well, I guess you could say, a lot of physical damage. They just have a lot of tankiness with the Razor. He has a mech plus a Shiva's guard. It's really hard to kill a Vos. I mean, it's a lot of DPS with his eye of the Yeah, you could see, like, the, the change our priority there for Power Rangers. They started focusing on the puck, killed him real quickly, which was great. But then, like, who do you go for? There was two other heroes in the front. It was uh, Kuro or Habos. They started poking Habos a little bit. They did a small amount of damage to him. And then Kuro came in with all that mag damage, that glowing rainbow pony. He makes such an appetizing target, too, because you know how much damage he's doing. He's outputting a lot of damage in a, in a big AoE. And he's also generally usually very, very squishy. But unfortunately, with his build, with Aghanims, a couple of Bracers, and particularly that Ghost Scepter, he was able to, right as they started focusing him, and did a little bit of damage, he popped that Ghost Scepter, and then Power Rangers immediately lost the fight because they couldn't focus either one of those heroes, and they were just taking way too much damage. So, um, Navi, I, I feel like the item choice here, especially that, Scott, uh, that Shiva's up on Havost, was uh, such a smart decision by him. You could see how Fun, that Nick. physical Fine, damage Fun, just tickles. You're going to be going down. Oh, God. He's, he's going to get low here. Ice Blast is going to come out. Maybe they can provide the dunk, but uh, Sing Sing to the rescue, man. He's going to be able to save Fun and get both of those kills as just your Cat and Moon do go down. And that may be uh, the five-man push coming out from Na'Vi. And Power Rangers, they do have a buyback on the Weaver. 
Uh, none on the axe, though. So they're still going to be at a big disadvantage. It was hard seeing how they're going to be able to win a 5v5 anyway. But a 5v5 without their main initiator becomes even worse. Man, don't mess with tree armor. That's uh, <laughs> your piece. What seems killable is always unkillable. Radiance Metal that's, the, uh, has that's the motto. And, well, one first range racks going down. Second range racks, uh, they don't want to go for it. Eye of the Storm's down. They need that. Yeah, playing a little bit safe. I mean, they, they do still have the Aegis to burn out here, but... Um, maybe MKB is going to be next item choice here for a Scandal, because it looks like Volts is going to angle towards a Heaven's Helper. I, I don't really see uh, SNY being picked up this late in the game. You already have Aghanims yeah. and Shivas. Heaven's Halberd will be a really great item versus both uh, the Weaver and the Templar Assassin. Little Piggy's gonna try and get four staffed away. Will be fine. And Navi just poking and prodding right now. Seeing if they can find some sort of opening on Power Rangers. Another Eye of the Storm doing a lot of work, and uh, Power Rangers, like, what do they do? They're trying to focus on uh, maybe killing a boss, but they know he's kind of been vulnerable to all their magic damage Radiant's right now, so they let the melee racks fallen. just fall, hoping to just buy them more time for themselves. If they try and force a fight, that could be the end of the game right here, right now, or they could lose a mid racks and uh, that melee racks and just go ahead and let the game lengthen out a little bit longer and hope for a better initiation. They need something to deal with this Lush Wreck. They need either a Diffusal Blade or a Sheep Stick. But I don't think they're going to get either of those. And I they, I, th I thought he wasn't going to go for Heaven's Halberd. And I, I, I'm going to stick to my guts because he went Saint and Jinyasha. Yeah. Okay. So I was right this game. Well done. Whew. Well done. I really thought like Heaven's Halberd versus a Templar Assassin and uh, Moon's Weaver. Like it's not like we have NKBs on either one of those heroes yet. So I, I would have been done with uh, Halberd, but... SNY is still going to be a good here. He's going to come right through the middle of one. He's already been sheeped up. Can he actually get off? He's silenced now. He's going to fall before he can get off the time lapse. Just your cat. He's also going to burn out on his initiation as it fails miserably for him. FNG and J4 both going to get blown up and scandal. Last hero left alive, and he will fall as well. The Phonics Onslaught. slot. Five heroes go down for Power Rangers, and they quickly call the GG after that one. Navi, they may have had a slight blunder, and their first attempt to go uphill against Power Rangers in that middle lane, but uh, they had, like you said, they had a bit of a, a posi positioning error. They pushed in a little bit too far, grouped up a little bit too much, and Cheshire Cat really punished them for that one, but doesn't seem to matter as they were still able to keep good control of the game.